Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and you're watching the Northtown News Magazine with Avi Myers, but he won't let me give him a haircut. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Back to that lemon light city, sweet home Chicago. Two, two is four. Four, four, six. Come on, baby, now get your business face. Come on, honey, don't you want to go back to the lemon last Hey there, I am really Marty Levinson. Don't let anybody fool you. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine show with the greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Avi Myers. Thank you, Marty. Avi Myers, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Community policing, caps24.org, go to ntnm.org to see all the uh, videos of the shows over the last eight years and change. Um, you guys are watching shows at record rates. Thank you so much. Jewish Chicago will be out uh, for the election, um, and it'll be out before early voting or right around the time early voting starts. We are greatly expanding our circulation in the north and northwest suburbs. Excuse me, and we also try within the city. It's become much more popular over the years, and we'll have the largest judicial section of anybody anywhere along those lines. Uh, it is a pleasure to, well, reintroduce you. She's been coming on the show for years. To our next guest, the clerk of the Circuit Court of Cook County, Dorothy Brown. How are yes, you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you? Good. A pleasure to have you here. Pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. And uh, what's it, what, well, your life has been interesting lately. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very interesting, very interesting. But, you know, um, uh, Avi, uh, because I know how I handle my business, because yeah. I know that uh, we do things according to the book in that office, you know, I have not been uh, uh, concerned about uh, the kind of things that have been occurring. I know that this is a political season, and, and people would love to have my office. So I expect uh, certain types of attacks, but these have been over and above. But, you know, we're dealing with it. Okay. Well, you're still standing, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we are still standing. And you know what? We're still doing a great job. Uh, my hat goes off to my staff who works very hard every day, and, and we have some new things to announce to you today. Oh, please. Yes. So one of the things that we have in progress is an interactive court order system uh, for our criminal division. Uh, we have it now. Uh, we're being, we're piloted it in uh, 26 in California, as well as all of the suburban districts, where the criminal judge is able to create te technically his own order. Uh, he, he uses the technology that my staff built, um, or either the state's attorney or the public defender can draft an order for the judge, electronically send it up to the judge's bench, and then the judge reviews it and then can enter that order. We're doing a parallel pilot, so they're doing it manually as well as um, uh, uh, technology you know, on the computer so that, um, uh, so that we can compare and see that the results are working properly before we go live with the entire process. So my hat goes off to Judge Porter and Karis Mishki over at 26 in California because they actually wrote the specs for this and came to us and then my staff built it. So it's Very nice. fantastic. And then what happens with that is there's an electronic image that's created that's then sent to my staff who then commits it to the electronic docket. Uh, that permits us to to send information to the sheriff because you know there's always some issue with whether or not the sheriff received the right information, and so now the sheriff receives typed uh, minimuses and um, from us, and we're in the process. We have we've programmed it to give the sheriff the data. Uh, however, the sheriff has a new jail management system, and when his new jail management system is uh, is in a position to receive actually accept the data, we place it there, we're placing it right now in a queue, and they're testing it, and when they get their system program where they can accept the data into their 
uh, system, they won't have to double data enter it. Uh, right now they have to get the typed up uh, MITs and then they have to type it into their system, but we're working with them so that they can receive our data one time. So, you know, so that... Yeah, like as a text. As, as a, as a, well, you can do a text form. in as addition to a graphic. I exactly, mean, I can, yeah. exactly, exactly. So that's, uh, uh, that's integrated justice at its best. If you remember, when I first took office, I called for a Cook County Integrated Criminal Justice Committee. And John Strozier, back in 2004, actually, no, before 2004, I think that was the last year he ran, but before that, actually appointed me, right after 911, uh, appointed me to be the chairman of the Cook County Integrated Criminal Justice Committee for Cook County. And through the years, we have been working on helping the various public safety agencies uh, integrate their systems with ours. Very good. I have Sonny and I actually filmed one of the conferences. Yes, you did. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's right. You have a very, very good memory. No, that was uh, a, it was a lot of fun, and it was very educational, to tell you the truth. And that was the Illinois, because I, at the time I was right, sharing was the Illinois, Illinois, yeah. Cook, uh, Illinois uh, Integrated Criminal Justice uh, Systems Committee as well, as well as the Cook County. Uh, so uh, you're absolutely right. You filmed that. And so that was an attempt to integrate systems throughout Cook County. But uh, we're working on Cook County, and it, so goes Cook County, go, so goes the rest of the state. Yeah. Now, um, I mean, w is there a time you can see when carbon paper finally becomes a thing of the past? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I uh, in my office, personally, for my staff, we don't use carbon paper. Yeah. It's the attorneys. Um, they don't bring enough copies. Uh, you know, whenever you uh, have a case in court and the judge rules, then you have to give a copy for the attorney, there has to be a copy for the opposing counsel, and then the original goes into the court file. Well, if they don't bring enough copies, then attorneys, they either bring their own carbon paper or they're asking us if we have carbon paper uh, so that they can then, when they're drafting an order, like if the judge tells them to draft an order, they go back to their desk, take three of our forms, and then put the carbon paper in between. Yes, the answer to your question is yes, I do see a time for that, but the only reason there's carbon paper is because attorneys are using it. I attempted to end carbon paper, said we won't be buying anymore, bring your own or whatever, uh, last spring, and I got all kind of uh, uh, calls saying, please, 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 don't get rid of the carbon paper. We, we, they don't want to bring their own copies, uh, enough well, copies. Um, we are not responsible for providing them with carbon papers. We're just resp or providing them with three forms. We're just responsible for providing them with the form. They're responsible for making the copies. It's an accommodation uh, that we provide to them. That started under the prior administration. But what I have done to try to allay some of that is to turn a lot of those forms into NCR forms. I don't have to do that. That's an expense that I have incurred just to make them three three. Yeah, ply. NCR isn't cheap. I mean, it's I used not to... not cheap at all. Yeah, I, I I was doing graphics for about thirty years. In, well, when you when you publish a magazine, you have to have a side business. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I got my own equipment to produce it, and I also did graphics for people. And some of it was NCR. I mean, mm -hmm. we did all kinds of interesting things. Well, business is one thing, and government is another. Right. Because right, you know, exactly. I'm not going to go criticize whatever a private business wants to do, because my tax money isn't involved. Whatever they right. want to do, they exactly. can do. So if you're talking seven hundred forms and the people use them uh, thousands of thousands of forms uh, uh, a year, and you have to do NCRs for all of that, that's significant. So, but what I envision uh, with my next uh, administration is e-courts, an e-court where everything is, elect is electronic. We have uh, an RFP that people have already responded to. I'm not a part of the evaluation committee, so I don't know What's who responded. A request for a proposal. Oh, okay for a new case management system. And within that system, we, want, we will have uh, the, a judicial module where judges will be able to um, uh, you know, uh, render uh, their cases electronically, uh, their orders, just like we're building for criminal right now, but that'll be throughout every case type. 
uh, electronic filing is within that. And what I'm hoping is that the Supreme Court will actually make electronic filing mandatory. Now, if it makes it mandatory, then what that ha what that means is then everything's coming in electronic. The judges can rule electronically. We can make the courtrooms where everyone can see the documents wow. uh, electronically, and then there would be no need for paper. Uh, the attorneys can go back to their their computers. And uh, they can even submit a draft order before the case starts, or they can go back to their computer and submit an electronic order up to uh, the judge for signing. And so that's when you can get rid of all paper, not just carbon paper. No, that would definitely be nice. I know that, I know me, myself, and I, um, as messy as, we, this is the studio, but it's really my house. And anybody, they're too polite to say this on the air, this place is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to tell you something. If I still was using paper instead of the computer for everything, uh -huh. I mean, you wouldn't be able to walk through the living room. There'd be so many pile, so many skids of paper running around. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But the interesting thing too, you know, uh, RV, it's very difficult for people to give up that paper. And as a matter of fact, uh, for cases that are electronically filed, because you know we do have electronic filing, we're one of the largest court systems in the country that has electronic filing. The Supreme Court still requires us to print those cases out and create a paper file. Interesting. <laughs> so that's a part of the Supreme Court order. So that's another thing that, you know, I want to get the Supreme Court to not have us uh, print that paper file. But that can all happen once we get the, make the e-record, the official court record. But, of course, it takes a little time because everyone moves at different paces and, and people are familiar with technology at different points and times as well. So it's just going to take some training. I have an uh, imaging and document management system. I think I've talked about it here. We started back in 2009. As a matter of fact, we started even sooner than that with one of our divisions, like 2007, uh, imaging everything that comes across the counter. Everything that comes through the courtroom, we have an electronic image of it. We have almost 200 million pieces of paper that have been imaged. Wow. So, um, so, so what happens with that is with the electronic filing coming in and everything coming across the counter that's imaged, the e-record is very, very easy to maintain. And, 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 and so all we need to do is now is just to make sure that we have the kind of computers in the, in the courtroom and that sort of thing to make that the official court record. No, that'd be great. I mean, listen, that would be, uh, you know, as it is, I remember how primitive the system you took over was. <laughs> yes, yes. Very, very primitive. You know, what you're talking about an almost 100-year system that I took over, and um, we had to do a lot. There were two divisions, the probate division and the county division, that were still writing the results of cases in docket books, these large docket books. Wow. When it would come out of the court, I actually witnessed it. They would literally handwrite in nice ink. Really, the best handwriter in your in your division would write what the judge ruled wow. in the book. And so uh, I automated both of those divisions. And so we had we are hundred percent automated from the standpoint of information coming out of the courtroom. And then we once we did that. Then we just started to work on all of these extra technological advancements, the electronic filing, the imaging and document management. And I don't think I've talked about my mobile app. We don't have a lot of time, so oh, talk. I have a mobile quick. app. Yeah. Uh, you can actually go to your iPhone or your Android phone and download from Apple or Google Play Store a mobile app, and you can see any civil case. Or you can see any traffic case. I know you. I, I know your audience does not get traffic tickets, but just in case you do, you can see any traffic case. Uh, you don't have to wait for that card or email indicating when your case is. You can see it on our mobile app. Real good. Do you have a website? Uh, CookCountyClerkOfCourt.org. Okay, and for politics, uh, Friends of Dorothy Brown. Very good. And she's on Facebook also. We're out of time. Thank you very much, Clerk of the Circuit Court, Thank Dorothy you. Brown. Thank you. Thanks, Sonny.